Hi everybody, I'm Kevin and today we're going to solve a missing person's case. Classification. Why do we classify? How do we classify? What are some ways that we can classify? Why do we need to classify? We have all the missing items here. We have different clues along the way. This will help us to solve this missing person's case. So, let's find out. What is classification? How do we classify things? Why do we classify things? How do we classify things? What are some ways that we can show the classifications of things? What are the different things around us? What are the characteristics of living and non-living things? How can we group some of the living things? Let's start with classification. With all the information here, with all the evidence, how can we classify? Classification requires us to put things into groups. It's easy for us to understand and study all the information here and to study the diversity around us. How can we do that? By the characteristics. Now, things. There could be living things, which is like your sheep, your dog, your plant. How do I know that a missing person is indeed a person and not a plant? There's also non-living things, which is like your plastic bottles and your cars. Now, let's find out. Living things, what do they have? What are some characteristics of the living things? Firstly, living things need air, water, and food. Next, living things can grow. Living things also respond to changes. And living things can reproduce. By knowing all of this, we know if our missing person is indeed a living thing. Now, the first thing, need air, water, and food. Living thing will die if there's not enough air, water, and food. Think about you and me. When we do not eat, we get hungry. And what happens if we do not have enough food? Yes, we will die. So, next thing, living thing can grow. What do I mean by growing? We can increase in height, we can increase in size, and we can change our appearance. So, what if we found a cocoon? Do you think we know that it's a butterfly? Butterfly change their appearance, and they look very different when they are young, a caterpillar, and when they are older, a butterfly. Next thing, living things can respond to changes. What does responding to changes mean? It can respond to heat, sound, light, and touch. Imagine someone scaring you behind. You will jump in shock. That is responding changes. Look at the plant. Some of the plants will grow towards the sunlight because they respond to light. Next thing, living thing can reproduce. What does living thing can reproduce mean? It means they can have young. And think about it. What if you and me, we do not reproduce? What will happen? the human population will cease to exist and they will no longer be human in the future. So how can we classify living things into the different group? And how can we narrow this missing person? The living thing can be a plant, can be animals, can be fungi, as well as bacteria. And that's the end of our first clue. Stay tuned for the second clue as we piece all the information together.